Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the Electric Eel Wheel 5 and the volume and, and sounds you should be expecting uh, to hear from them. Sort of non-intuitively, after running the Electric Eel Wheel for a while, you know, many hours of, of runtime, it'll actually get uh, to be a little bit quieter than when I ship them. And the reason for that is uh, these pieces are injection molded and I can't really feel it. Um, sometimes you can feel a little uh, lip, but um, basically when, when this is molded, there's this tiny little seam here uh, and that can uh, uh, rub on this darker piece of plastic and it creates either this shh, shh, shh sound or um, sort of a, a little bit of a knocking sound. And I have a video here that I'm gonna insert from a user that uh, you know had it uh, pretty badly. So on that, you can definitely hear both a shh, shh, shh and a little bit of a knocking noise. Now, what the reason I have two wheels here is this is one of my test units that has been running for many, many, many months um, of continuous runtime. Uh, it doesn't take that long to kind of get them broken in, but uh, this is the model that I had that you know was completely broken in. And here's a brand uh, new fresh one, and it doesn't have the, bat, the, the, the knocking noise as much as the other one, uh, but uh, it's, I can sort of show you how on this one to uh, reduce it. Uh, but I would point out that reducing it yourself is, is completely optional, because uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some sandpaper, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it'll actually fix itself over time. This one I've never done anything to, and it just is kind of reached uh, minimal uh, you know, audio output after just running it for a while. So um, now that you understand that it's sort of these seams um, that are on this flyer that are intersecting, intersecting with uh, this darker plastic, um, there's really two places that, that matter most, and that's here and um, on the back. So we're gonna be focusing on, on those areas. So here's what one that's broken in will sound like. It's, you know, very quiet, uh, relatively speaking. I've never said that the electric eel wheel is completely silent. I say it's about the volume of a person talking. Uh, so this is what you've got. It's a very, you know, consistent. There's no clicking, no shh, shh, shh noise. It's um, consistent white noise. Um, now, if I take this one and I switch it over to this one that has not been run. Whoops. That's the wrong one. We're going to talk about him later. Uh, okay. So, uh, we'll get back to that other one in a little bit. But um, So, for this one, um, you can just hear it's, it's not as smooth. Um, there's a little bit of a shh, shh. To it. Um, it's definitely a little bit louder than the previous one. So the fix for that is I've got some um, either run it for a long time and that's kind of the the safest option. You definitely don't want to over um, sand these things. Um, you, it, it's safest to just let your wheel run for a while and it will become quiet. But if you want to address the issue right away um, you can use uh, some sandpaper. This is 320 grit sandpaper, so it's very fine. Uh, I would go with 320 or even finer sandpaper uh, as a recommendation. So what I do is I get it sort of spinning at a you know a normal speed, um, and then I can um, just lightly. I'm not pushing hard, but I'm just sanding a little bit, and uh, that kind of smooths it out a little bit. I'm going to do the same in the back here. And so that's helped some. Um, the, the remaining bits are sort of, there's a little seam inside of the uh, flyer here that's also rubbing. And there's not a good way to get rid of those because you'd have to sort of rub it without spinning it. Uh, and you don't want to do that because you'll create flat spots and that'll be worse than the actual seam itself. So um, I would say the sandpaper gets rid of um, you know, 
especially if it's a bad case where you can actually hear the clicking, it will get rid of the clicking. Um, but uh, to get the volume sort of all the way to the lowest state, you just have to use your electric eel wheel for a while. Um, but I mean, this one has no clicking at this point. It's just not completely sort of uh, worn in. So anyways, that's, uh, this is something that'll affect all of the electric eel wheel shipping. Um, and that's noise to expect. And, and you can look forward to them getting a little bit quieter over time. Um, so once again, this is the current, um, this is sort of one that is not totally broken in, but is, is sanded pretty well. And I'll switch back to this one that's broken in completely. So there you go. So now I've covered sort of the, the standard problem. Now I have seen only one of these, so I debated whether it was even worth mentioning, but um, I did see it. So I thought I would uh, bring it up. Um, so the problem is uh, one of the wheels we shipped out, um, so if I'm, I'm just turning it to a very low volume and holding it in place, and it should make basically no noise at that point, but it's got this high pitch noise. I hope it comes through on the speaker. But basically there's this, this beeping no this beep noise that comes out of it. That is not correct. Um, that, that is definitely a defect in the eel wheel. And um, I've root caused it. I know what it is. Anybody who has this problem, contact me. I will replace, um, I, I will work with you to fix the problem. So um, the easiest way for me to fix it is for me to send you a little chip like this um, and have you replace it. And I'm actually gonna show how, how you can do this yourself if I send you one of these chips. Um, something went wrong with the programming in the chip. I still don't understand why um, one of them went out this way. We should have uh, definitely caught that issue during testing maybe. For some reason, it started after we had shipped it. Um, I mean, every eel wheel is tested, and I thought we would have caught something like this. But um, anyways, one went out, and I wanted to show people how uh, to fix it if it is the problem. So again, you've got this annoying pitch, right? So if you're willing to try to fix this on your own, um, I'll walk you through the steps. So the first thing you need to do is you need to remove this wooden plate here um, in order to get access to the chip. And to do that, I would usually um, use like a, um, I would usually use a wrench, but more people are going to have a pliers. So I'll demonstrate with the pliers. And then you need a, a fairly fine tipped uh, uh, Phillips screwdriver. So um, what you do is you just take these two uh, bolts off. And while you're doing this, um, it, there, there's two spacers and a bolt. So I'm going to basically try not to have those spacers fall off. If they fall off, you can put them back on. but. Um, it's a little easier if, if they never fall off. So that's why I'm keeping it sort of in this vertical position. Okay, so at this point, we can now take off this wooden panel and we actually have access to this microchip. And if you look at the microchip in there, uh, it's got a little dot on it that's going to be facing uh, that direction, sort of towards this knob. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little uh, regular screwdriver to sort of pop the chip out. And then I'm going to insert um, a new one that has been programmed correctly. And I made sure that the white dot is, is facing sort of the right direction and everything. And then at this point, 
you would put this plate back on. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to completely tighten it. I'm just going to um, put it on, put these lock nuts on a little ways. Um, and I'll, I'll come back and tighten it later. But uh, so now it, it's basically fixed. So if we plug it in now, um, so I mean, you, it's trying to turn. And if I stop it, there's no noise now. So that, that fixed it. So if anybody has that particular issue, definitely contact me and I'll work with you to get a replacement chip. Or if you're not uh, comfortable with replacing the chip, I can, I can get you uh, a new eel wheel because uh, they definitely shouldn't make that beeping noise anymore. Um, that, that was something that happened on the previous version, but we've, we've reworked the chips so that uh, they run at a, a higher frequency and you can't actually hear, hear the noise coming out of uh, the motor anymore. So that was one of the things we did to really quiet this version. And uh, hopefully, you know, just to reiterate, the, the first issue sort of affects all of them and it's that there's a seam on this piece of plastic um, or this plastic just isn't completely smooth and it's uh, rubbing up against this um, brace here and that causes a little bit of noise and uh, you can get rid of some of it with a little bit of sandpaper uh, but uh, you basically the, the best way to fix it um, and the way to completely fix it is to just run your uh, electric eel wheel uh, for a few hours and the, the problem will kind of these two pieces will mate better and the problem will go away. And then the second problem I showed you was a defective uh, chip on the microprocessor board and that's something I just need to ship you a, a newly programmed chip and that would fix the, uh, the squeaking noise. So hopefully now people understand sort of what kinds of noises to expect from the electric eel wheel. Thanks for watching.